What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. Today's video I'm going to show you how to build this pair of mid-century modern end tables. I used a new technique for me at least. It's called kerfing and that allowed me to bend the corners here, get that nice radius and really give it that kind of classic mid-century modern look. So uh, hopefully you enjoy the build. Let's go ahead and get started. So I built this project out of two two foot by four foot pure bond walnut veneered plywood project panels. And the first step was to cut the panels to width, 17 inches in my case, which I did on the table saw. After cutting the panels to width, I needed to set the blade height for the kerfing process, which is the method I used to bend the plywood. So kerfing involves making a number of cuts almost all the way through the piece. So I cut through all but the last layer of plywood for this project. Removing this material allows the plywood to form a radius, and this exact radius depends on how the kerf cuts are spaced. In my case, I wanted a fairly sharp radius, so after a lot of trial and error, I landed on a spacing that worked for me. My table saw blade has a kerf of an eighth of an inch, and I moved the fence over a quarter of an inch between each cut. This left me with eighth inch kerf cuts with eighth inch strips in between each kerf. Since these end tables are rectangular, I mirrored my kerf cuts and only had to move the fence every other cut. So I started the cuts with the fence at six inches, made a pass, turned the panel around 180 degrees, made another pass, and then moved the fence over a quarter of an inch to six and a quarter of an inch. I continued this two more times, then moved the fence back to five and three quarters of an inch and went down four steps to five inches. This process meant all of my kerfs on this first pass were centered at six inches. I know this sounds confusing, but if you go to your table saw and kind of look at it, it'll make a little more sense, I think. So next I moved the fence to 15 inches and repeated the process moving the fence a quarter of an inch at a time, up to 15 and three quarters of an inch, and then down to 14 inches. You can see the ends of the panel start to get flexible as I made more passes, and this is exactly what I wanted. I just kept making cuts until I had all my kerfs cut. So I wanted my end tables to be about two feet tall, and I used 16 inch tall hairpin legs for the base. This meant that the carcass of the end table needed to be roughly eight inches tall, which was taller than I could get with the four foot long project panel. To make up for the additional length, I needed to add a strip to the bottom of the carcass. So I cut the strip to six inches wide at the table saw and 17 inches long at the miter saw, and then cut domino mortises to attach the strip to the carcass. This also could have been done with dowels, biscuits, or even pocket holes from the bottom of the carcass since no one would ever see them. Next, it was time for the glue up, which was pretty interesting. First, I added glue to each of the kerfs, making sure to focus the glue towards the middle to avoid squeeze out on the edges, I then started to slowly bend the plywood, which was pretty stiff at this point. So I wiped on some warm water around the corners of the bend, and this helped the wood bend without cracking. I held each half in place temporarily with a few clamps. Next I added the strip with the dominoes, gluing it into place. I clamped the bottom section together with a few parallel bar clamps, and then used some more clamps to make sure everything was properly aligned. Finally I checked for square and wiped away any glue squeeze out. While the carcass dried, I started working on the face frame. So I milled some walnut using my planer and jointer and then cut it into strips on the table saw. I needed the face frame to be extra wide to account for the radius of the corner, so I cut my strips about an inch wide. Next, I cut the face frame on the miter saw and then glued the frame together using a band clamp. Once the carcass and face frame had dried, I glued them together. I just picked up some of these face frame clamps and they make this process a lot easier. It takes a lot of clamps to get rid of any of the gaps between the carcass and face frame. After the glue dried, I flushed the face frame to the carcass using a white side ultimate flush trim bit that I picked up from woodpeckers. This bit has been a game changer for me, but I still sometimes forget which direction to feed the piece and this happens. Luckily it didn't do any real damage, it just kind of scared the crap out of me. And you can see how nice of a finish this bit leaves, it's really pretty amazing. Next I milled up some more walnut for the drawer fronts using my planer and jointer again. I cut the drawer fronts so that they had an eighth inch reveal around all of the sides, and then traced the corner radius on the drawer fronts. These corners are all slightly different, so this process took a lot of fitting. I sanded in my line on the oscillating belt sander and just kept checking the fit until it looked how I wanted. Before attaching the back to the carcass, I gave the whole piece a good sanding, making sure to sand the inside well while I still had easy access to it. 
For the back, I used quarter inch plywood. I just cut it oversized and glued and nailed it onto the back. After the glue dried, I flushed it up at the router table and also added a pretty heavy chamfer. If you chamfer the edge so that the chamfer just meets the side of the piece, the back panel basically disappears. It's a pretty cool trick. Finally, I added an eighth inch radius roundover to the outside and inside edges of the face frame, as well as the drawer fronts. Next, it was time to work on the drawers. I actually had enough walnut veneer plywood to make the drawers out of, so that's what I went with. While I'm cutting the drawer sides, let's talk about Pure Bond Plywood, one of the sponsors of today's video. I really love using their plywood. It's formaldehyde free, made in USA, and just super high quality. It's available exclusively at Home Depot, and I'll have a link in the video description if you'd like to learn more. With the drawer sides cut to size, I cut the drawer bottoms from quarter inch plywood, and then it was time for assembly. So first I added some glue to the drawer bottom and temporarily assembled the drawer sides using glue and brad nails. Next, I attached the drawer bottom to the sides using brad nails, making sure everything was square before getting everything attached here. Next, I reinforced all the corners with inch and a quarter screws, and then reinforced the bottom using the same screws. This process is really quick and simple and makes for a very strong drawer. Next, it was time for finishing. So off camera, I did some more sanding, bringing all the pieces up to 180 grit, and then removed the dust. For the finish, I used Waterlox, one of the sponsors of today's video. Waterlox is one of my favorite finishes for walnut since it really brings out the grain, as you can see here. So Waterlox is a blend of tongue oil and resins and creates a really tough water-resistant finish that's also really beautiful. The tongue oil penetrates into the wood while the resins remain elastic, and this combination holds up to wear extremely well. To learn more about Waterlox, check out the link in the video description below. So I applied three total coats of Waterlox, sanding between coats with 320 grit sandpaper. Next, I installed the drawers. I used these bottom mounted drawer slides. With the drawers installed, I could install the drawer fronts. I used the playing card trick to get the spacing right around the drawer front, and then temporarily attached the drawer front using double-sided tape. This held the drawer front in place long enough to attach them permanently with inch and a quarter screws. Next, I installed the handles on the drawer front. I used this drawer handle jig to get everything aligned and had to countersink the screws from the inside to reach through the drawer and the drawer front. I used these brush brass handles, which I think look really great with this mid-century modern style piece. I'll have a link to these in the video description below. The last step was to attach the hairpin legs, which was a super simple process. I just marked the location for the legs, pre-drilled the holes, and then screwed them on. These eye symbol legs from Rockler come already painted and with the mounting screws, and I'll have a link in the video description to the exact legs I used. And with the legs attached, the tables were done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This was a really cool project for me. Again, uh, the kerfing technique was totally new to me. Uh, took a bit of trial and error to kind of get all the, the measurements and, and widths right, but uh, I love the way it came out. Obviously the face frame is pretty much a requirement unless you want to be able to see those kerf cuts, uh, but on this type of cabinet style of end table, it worked out great. So if you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed. I put out new project videos like this every Tuesday. Also, I want to say a big shout out and thank you to all my Patreon subscribers supporters. If you want to check that out, I'll have a link. And last, I have links in the description to all the products I talked about in this video if you want to check them out. Thanks again for watching, guys, and until next time, happy building.